Hey, everybody, welcome to the Grubcast. Uh, you know, t- yeah, this last, uh, what was it? Um, was it Saturday? Yeah, I think it was Saturday. I, I was looking for a car. I was out in Cerritos Auto Square. I bought a car there years and years ago. And I said, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm looking for this car. Where should I go? Cerritos Auto Square. I, back in the 90s, I bought a brand new Nissan Maxima right off the dealership floor. And it was one of the best days of my life. I, uh, it was green. It was forest green metallic with a, a two tone, uh, like a creamy color interior, all the fixings, all the technology. I was in love. And I remember driving away from the dealership, not even knowing where I was going. I had I had no idea where direction of where I was headed. Uh, I just drove off into the sunset, literally into the sunset. I, have, I remember distinctly I was driving. It was about dusk. And I remember driving like into the, into the, into the surrounding Cerritos area, had no idea where I was, but it was so much fun. So um, I'm out looking for a, a beater car, and uh, of course I didn't find anything. Everything now seems to be like a million dollars, and I'm for for a for a junker, not a junker, but like a economy car. They they want ridiculous prices right now. I don't even know what to do. It's crazy. Um, but I was out, and I said, you know what? I want to want to cruise around a little bit. I got a little time on my hands. It's still early in the morning. Uh, I'm just going to run around to the area. And I said, you know, what? where can I find a good breakfast spot? And uh, and so I started looking at some places. Let me pull them up here. Um, I cruised into the Starbucks uh, right there in uh, Cerritos, not far from the from the auto center. And I asked the lady behind the counter, I said, you know, where should I go if I want breakfast? Where can I have eggs, bacon, pancakes, you know, so forth? They said, you know what? You should try Rosewoods. So I, I cruise over there and I walk in and I you know, kind of do a little investigation. I see a bar. I see a lot of hubbub. Very busy place, by the way. Uh, a lot of families, a lot of uh, big groups in there. A little noisy for me. So I just said, ah, you know. So I started looking through the phone, trying to find something that would, you know, catch my eye. And I tried a few places. I, I ran around a bit. You know, I, I tried a couple of greasy spoons. I sat down in one place and I knew immediately I made a mistake. So I got up and left. Um, and then I'm on the same street. I think it's Bellflower. I see this place called Steelcraft. So I cruise in there and I look at um, lots of cool seating arrangements. They have those... Uh, they had two or three of these uh, large, uh, what do they call those chairs where they hang them? You know, the hangers, they have like a, uh-huh. so they had a few of those. They had nice little uh, couches and seating, bench seats, you know, where you can go in there and eat your meals. I, I just saw this as a, a great uh, gathering point. Mm-hmm. Like if you had a local band or you had uh, comedians or whatever, you could have them do right there in the open area where everybody's standing around drinking beers or whatever. Oh, I just thought it was great. I'm gonna yeah. I just pulled it this place up. So there's yeah. three of them. One in Garden Grove also. Okay, really great concept. Fantastic. I want to give it a try. Oh yeah, I I don't know about the food itself. You Long know, Beach Boulevard and Bixby Avenue. So it's it's. Oh, not, that's Bixby that's Knowles. Not far. Yeah, it's not far from the freeway. We could just jump right off. We the need to do that. Five. We're gonna do that one night. And and we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. Um, maybe invite your sister. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but um, okay. So I ended up. The lady tells me. You know, you should try. You should try some place called um, Nest. Nest, yeah, it's called Nest. Inside the same place? No, down the street. It was actually probably a block over. Uh, it was called Nest Tambien, I think. Let me let me verify this here. Damn, this looks really like an interesting concept. That's <laughs> great. That should be done here in Valley Center. It would be great. Okay. The Nest Tambien. And it's at, uh, let's see, 16916 Bellflower Boulevard. And apparently they have another concept too called Nest Breakfast, which is all breakfast. So I cruise in there. Really nice place. Um, very updated. You know, clean environment. Uh, I see The first thing I see is a bar. Where they have, um, where I had a um, mint. What's it called? It's called a mint. What do they call it? What is the drink? The uh, the drink, the mojito. 
Oh. It was a, a it was not an alcoholic drink. It was a coffee. A coffee. It was an iced coffee that was they must have put lime and and mint in it. Lime in your coffee. And it was a little sweet, but you know what? Uh, Cuban food, Cuban drinks, oftentimes have a lot of sugar. Oh, this is Cuban. Okay. No, I don't know, but mojito I think is a Cuban drink, and uh, a lot of sugar, a little sweet, but um, it was tasty. Just a little sweet for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also had the uh, breakfast burger, which was I think they had they make their own rolls, and had double patties, double cheese, and then an egg. Uh, with a uh, bacon jam, pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, and then they had some cool uh, potatoes. Where uh, apparently they they treat them three different ways before you get them. But it was like a kind of a crispy take on like a home fry. Very very cool. But I mean, I had fun over there, man. I had a lot of fun over there uh, cruising around. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I don't know much about cerritos or cerritos. Do you know, I mean, you ever spend a lot of time other than going to the auto mall? Never, not once. Yeah. Well, I think, I think uh, definitely Bellflower is on the come because uh, I saw lots of things. They had a whiskey bar. Everybody has to expand out from LA, you know, with well, LA and all that. Yeah, there's, well, there's, I, it's great though. Yeah, it is because, you know, there's so many people there and it's always so packed because we're, we're, we're on the West side. Well, uh, obviously so. someone's making money. And they're uh, investing their money in, uh, you know, this type of thing. You kind of have to, like, yeah, they had to expand out. To, to get around in L.A. is a friggin' yeah. nightmare. And if you're trying to get, let's say, from Bellflower to the west side. Yeah. Depending on the oh, yeah. time. I mean, yeah. the, for, a, I, don't, I don't even think it's 20 miles. I think it's probably less. And you could spend an hour and a half to get there. It's, it's ridiculous. It's, it's terrible. But you know what's really funny? I think it's everywhere now like that. Everywhere, even well, here, man. Even here, I was out in the middle of the day yesterday, and I was fighting traffic. Wait, where? Right here. No, no. no. When you say here, okay. tell me where is here. Okay, I went down to Valley. I made the right going towards Civilization, Dennis Candido, and I, I'm telling you that the it's it was crazy. There, there are people. There's only two lanes going in the direction I'm going, and they have cons- road construction. No, not, that didn't affect it. I don't think. Oh. Be- I mean, to my knowledge, I didn't see any major construction. I wasn't. We weren't fighting the construction. It was just that the, there was a lot of cars on the road in the middle of the day. I mean, it was, I don't go out in the day much, right? Uh, and I just was seeing, there was, there was a lot of cars. And they were all trying, kind of driving slow. And it was tough to get through there. Mm-hmm. It was. But I mean, it, uh, the other day I was on the freeway, in, uh, the 78 right here in uh, Escondido. It was busy there too in the middle of the day. And that's, that has never been the case. Yeah. and right, But see, right now too, we're experiencing, because of the rains that, that came through for you know a while there, they are doing some massive work on our on the seventy eight. Sure, I mean, and sure. they closed it down, completely closed it down on one side, and and yeah, but, and they repaired it, and then they completely closed it on the other side, and they're working on that now. So it's all yeah, it's, I, I it's hear bad. that, I hear that, but I I do not understand the traffic right here. I mean, obviously, a lot of people moved to town. That's the and it's part. gentrifying, yeah. and it is starting to. I mean, it was it was not good. I didn't like. I mean, I was driving. Un, way under the speed limit to get so right there. So creating a steel craft over here might be a good idea. <laughs> you really? I mean, it's, it's crazy. But I mean, I think if you got a piece of land, you have to buy it though. You have to buy the land. Um, the piece of land on a major thoroughfare and had seven or eight containers, turn them into units mm-hmm. and then fill them full of businesses. Yeah. It just would be great. Yeah. And then have like entertainment in the middle. You know, and have like a or television. Like you said, and, you could rent it out for events. Yeah, or private parties. Mm-hmm. Oh, it'd be cr- it'd be crazy for a private party. Interesting. So, um, yeah, lots of opportunity there. But you know, it it, it takes money. I mean, that I mean, you buy, you buy the property. You have to buy the property. I, in my in my estimation, I just think that the rents would be so high that, and then of course they'll increase the rents on you after you've built it out after you built it out then all of a sudden that you sign a lease for three oh, or four yeah, years yeah, yeah. and then in that that time frame they double your rent no mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so no you'd have to buy the land I agree yeah, yeah I agree. but it would be uh, worthwhile doing for sure because you could i mean there's so many um uh, people making cool food but you see, and even when you buy that land too then you have to like get your permits you have to make sure and then the city has to approve it and it's, it's just hog, yeah, it's it's hog, hog, hog wash mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but um <laughs> very cool though yeah, sounds you, like it. 
Sounds, I mean, just from the picture, I just yeah, you know, it would be it. cool. It would be something if that was to do something that would be I'd like that. that yeah, that, that I would could be great. See you doing that. Yeah, because you know, then you, you could have uh, very easily have three or four concepts of your own, and then yeah. rent the other units. Yeah, you know, have them come in, and then you know, build it out with nice environment. Yeah, can you imagine? It's like okay, you've got your fancy, you know, uh, beautiful pizza ovens and, and have sure. these beautiful pizzas. And sure. then you could have a great burger stuff yeah. and then you could have something a little more upscale. You know, when, when the people, oysters and champagne. <laughs> I mean, really, you could have lots of things in one little area, one mm -hmm. small area. It's basically like having that central market in downtown LA. You could, you know, do it there, have tacos and who knows what. Right? It's it's really, I mean, it's just a brilliant concept. I mean, it's almost like you one of those things where you go, I wish I'd have thought of that. Yeah. You know, but then again, I mean, if you don't have the money, what are you going to do? Right. Yeah. And that's not cheap. No, no, I just don't see renting it though, because I think the rent would be obscene. No, you're right. That's yeah, that makes no obscene. sense because, like you said, as soon as you start to get it going, or whatever. Oh, let me, your rent's gonna go up. Yeah. Now what? Now you're forced. You know, your hands are tied. You're like. You know the nice part about this though, they had a one of those uh, parking lots in the back. Mm. Well, you need it. No, no, I mean, but like they had one of those parking lots that was, uh, you know, like in Escondido where they have those uh, pay lots, you know, or those right across from. Um, it's on second, right across on uh, Calmia, right across from uh, uh, Esco Gelato. Yeah. There's that lot yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. That is the kind of lot they had in the back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, you need one. I'm yeah, sure you're gonna it'd be really one. great. Yeah, you need one. You, you need to have a place where people can park. Because I'm thinking right now, you know, like in a place like over here, you know, you buy the land and then if a Trump, someone tried to park on the street, it would just be crazy. Well, you're just not, be, you can't park on the street. No, you couldn't park on the street. Nope, you need the lot. But things will change. You know, things will change again. I, you know, I wonder if they're going to put one in Escondido. If they put one in Escondido, I'd be there every day. If they put one in Escondido. I don't even know if there's room. Like, where would you put it? In the old uh, De Chico's? Yeah. Oh, that's a good. Yeah. It's a, it seems a little small, though, still. No, if you knock the, knock the De Chico's down and put it in there, you could. There's a big parking lot. A lot of wasted space in that parking lot. Yeah, I know. I'm just still thinking. It's that would be the way to small, go. Could you imagine putting a steel craft in that? That'd be great. <sighs> right on Center City? Oh, it would be brilliant. Yeah. It would be brilliant. So whoever does it, whoever, I don't, nope. I don't know what they're going to put there. Mm -hmm. Did they say? Did the guy say to you what he was going to put there? No. Or it, if he did, I wasn't listening to him. So. If, if they put something, that, that would be the smartest move. They would make bojillions. They would. You couldn't lose on that. You'd have good you'd renters, as long as the renters are paying their money. Mm -hmm. And if you're getting people in there. And the concept is great. It's a great concept. All right. Okay. Well. So anyways, uh, the, after that, we came back here, right? And we went and did, um, we went out to, you know, oh my God. You, well, we, want, we wanted to have a date, you and me. And I said, okay, let's just go run around. You found something. And we went over to the place that this new beer spot in Esco that is a, an acquired taste. You know, and I'm no, I disagree with that. Okay. Well, it's not acquired. It's a, a brewery. It's a, you know, uh, another microbrewery, I guess, whatever. Sure. So they I mean, make their own beers and, and it has, you know, five stars. Everybody loves them. And clearly, you know, you have to get, find the beer that you like. I actually am not a beer drinker. What's the name of the, name of the place? Are you going to uh, go down there with it? Uh, what was it called? Black Plague. Okay. And apparently there's, uh, there's one in, Oceanside. That's where yeah. the original one is. And so they've expanded over here. So, well, let me ask you this question. Do you, you know, uh, given the environment, the, the ambiance, mm -hmm. do you see yourself hanging in there by yourself? By myself? Yeah. No, why would, I don't or take you, you next time you and your buddy wants to go, you know, your friend. You have one, to like beer. If you well, forget, like beer, 100% go okay. hang out there. Okay. If, if you're, a well, beer you know, here's the thing. Um, what's it called again? Black Plate? Mm hmm. I think I should have got the, well, maybe I wasn't putting two or two together. I did not get that concept before I went. I should have when I got there. Because for me, uh, I just, I'm not a gothic guy. You know what I mean? I'm, I don't like the whole death and skulls and I'm not, you know, it's just not, I mean, it's not my aesthetic. So that's what they have in there. They have pictures of the Grim Reaper. They've got goat heads, uh, pictures of goat heads. I don't know about that. Well, they do. I don't know. Uh, they but have. They, they've, they've got like bats and spiders. It's, it's almost like a Halloween bar, <laughs> you know, and it, just for me, that's, I, you know, I mean, the beer could be amazing. Yeah. The service could be amazing. Yeah. 
Um, the guy that we dealt with, very nice. Yeah. Very nice guy. Very attentive. You know, here, get you a flight. Want to try these things. What I read when I, because I was just looking for anything and it was a Sunday night and it's, you know, it's not like there's a parent. This is one thing I can't stand. I don't even understand it. About what? About San Diego. Okay. I What's mean, it? and granted, maybe it's North San Diego. The okay. fact that places don't stay open past nine is ludicrous to me. Always been. I've always had issue with this from the time we moved to to San Diego. You know, not being able to go out at eight and expect that things will be open and there will be food available to me has always been ludicrous. And I thought, oh, that that will change. That will change. Well, not on a Sunday. Apparently, on a Sunday, everything closes by nine, even eight. Some things don't even open at all. So when we're down over there in downtown Escondido, what was open? Like. 1% of the things were open. Uh, it was stupid. So, yeah. So that was really the only place to take you. And then you mentioned that they had good food. It said on the, yeah, it said, and, and granted, I don't trust any reviews, but I thought we'll give it a shot. Five stars. Everybody said the food was great. The service was great. The beer was fantastic. So mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, let's give it a shot. Well, when we get there, kitchen was already closed. Sure. It was eight what time o'clock, was it? Eight, eight o'clock. o'clock. Well, they, I think they always close an hour before the right. closing, actual closing. So that's what happened because yeah. they closed the bar closes at nine. So and, and that really put a dampener on my mood too because I was hungry. It was time to eat, and uh, you know, didn't have mm-hmm. food. But you know what? They said it was good. I mean, they the said, it, said the, it was good. They said burgers are fantastic. The food's fantastic. The service is fantastic. And it, the service and the beer. So, like I said, I'm not a beer drinker. I ordered a flight just to try some yeah. stuff out. I liked two of those beers. Um, and I don't really like beer, like, but I could see myself, oh, I could drink this thing. I could actually sit here and drink this beer. It would be good. So if a guy likes beer, yeah, go. Go try some different beers. You didn't ask. You weren't really, you know, saying, oh, I want you to bring me this or that. You didn't look at the menu. You didn't do any of that. So L- well, you, you know, were already well, in that front. It was like, no food, I'm out of here. Yeah, well, here's the thing. If you go someplace expecting to eat, and they don't understood. have, they're closed. And then it kind of, you know, okay, yeah, it's time understood, to go. Understood. But, you know, then when you're, okay, so let's, let's just say this. I, I admit it. There are times when you, um, you have expectations of going somewhere. And I didn't have any expectations of this place. Because when you said the name, you said black something. And I was like, okay. And you said it was new. It's in Escondido. We like trying new places. Okay, let's go. I get there, and unfortunately, the interior, the, the decor wasn't exactly I felt comfortable in. That's all. I, I don't like pitch black walls with pictures of goat heads and things. Uh, it's not my, I mean, it's like, it's like saying, hey, um, you know, we're going to go to a haunted house on your birthday. You know, it's, And I'd be like, yay. And, and it, <laughs> I, it's not my aesthetic. You know, I don't like, uh, you know, the haunted houses, you know. So that was the first thing. Then the food, there was no food. And then, you know, I'm not, like you said, I'm not really exactly a, drear, a beer drinker, a drear binker, a drear binker. <laughs> I think you've been. I might have been drinking, right a beer, bearing, drink, what was it? <laughs> Brinking beer? I don't know. Brinking deer. This is what I should have been saying. Um, yeah, I drink beer. I have a few beers I, I do. I don't just go, I don't go to a lot of uh, breweries trying all the various types of sours and, mm-hmm. and oh, you know, try this, this porter. You know, and, and don't forget, hey, you know, look, I, I stick to the kind of the main road because I don't drink that much beer. Uh, I drink the, the the big name, the bigs. You know, I, I can't pass up a really well chilled, delicious stone, delicious. I can't pass it up. Um, I, I occasionally like a Hefeweizen, you know, maybe Blue Moon uh, and or things like it. I do like a, a, a ale every now and again. I, my One of my favorites is... Um, a beer called Samuel Smith's Winter Welcome. I do. I've always loved this beer. Oh, you know, and what kind of got me there too is that an old friend of ours from literally twenty years ago owned a place called Q's in Encinitas. Uh, there was a pool hall, mm-hmm. and he owned it. And we would go in there when we first came to San Diego, mm-hmm. and we I had this beer at this bar, and it was in a pint bottle. Yeah. It's English, and it was it's only a very limited time during the winter. And it has a very it has a very unique looking label. It comes in a pint bottle. I, so anyway, I'd buy when I'd go in there. So oddly enough, uh, one night we're there, and we you know the the real estate market was hot, and I began chatting with the owner Bob. He was a great guy, real estate agent. 
His first job was real estate agent. Second time, second job was the bar. And uh, he says, I, you know, I said, there's no way, you know, that we can get a house. We're in too much debt. We have too much of this, too much of that. We can't buy a house. And he says, you know what? I can help you. So he ended up helping us. We ended up getting a home, our first place. And on the night we get there, we had to get the keys. We walk in the house. We, I open, there's an old refrigerator in the kitchen. And I, I open the door and the, the refrigerator is full of this beer. It's the only thing in there, but it's just pints and pints. It must've been two or three cases of this beer and it was expensive beer. Because when I go now to uh, BevMo or whatever to buy, I see, and sometimes I see it there, it's got to be three or four or $5 a pint. Okay. Delicious beer. But uh, it, well, you should have seen this. I, mean, I should have taken a picture, but it was so long ago. I don't even think that I, I don't even know what was in my head, but I should have taken a picture because I always tell this story and I, I have no proof, <laughs> but it was, it was just a, it was a, it was, it was like one of those scenes in one of those movies where you open it and this bat's back lid, of course, the refrigerator, you open it and all you see is this glistening golden concoction in these pint bottles with this cool label. It, it was, it was so memorable. But you know, it's funny enough, uh, Bob used to tell me all these stories about how he'd sell a house, uh, you know, depending upon the, the the customer, he would have a party for them. And he said a couple of times to, to attract his customers, he would, um, he would have a party for them when they closed on their house, at the house. And he'd done tacos, apparently, had a taco truck come, and they'd make tacos for his customers, and they'd have a little party, have invite the whole family over. I think it's a brilliant idea. And, and I'm telling you right now, to this day, it is burned in my brain how, what, how I felt at that moment. I thought, okay, well, how cool. You know, I mean, he'd have to do this. This is, this is $100 worth of beer or more. And, but, I mean, obviously he made some money on the sale. But it was just this moment of, it was like the music went up in a movie. You know, you hear the, you hear the, the, the music swelling and your emotions are running. That's how I felt. And you said that's an ale? What kind of beer is it? Because like, I'm not... I, I think it's a winter ale. So when I look at their website and stuff... Who, Samuel Smith? That, no, this um, Black Plague. Okay. It says that they have... You know, it's a award-winning craft beer brewery. Um, and it's got ales, lagers, pilsners, stouts, barrel-aged beers, and more. Yeah. I don't even know the <laughs> I don't know oh. what the difference is between well, any I've, of these things. To my knowledge, I think a lot of beer like Budweiser or that or Corona, I think it's, you know, they do it and then they bottle it. Right? But what's the difference between an ale, a lager, a Pilsner, oh. a stout, a well, barrel aged? You're asking the wrong guy. Yeah. But I do know that it has a lot to do with the viscosity of the beer mm. and the dark, the color of the beer. Well, I know, I know that I enjoyed and I, I said, oh, this one tastes good. And it was... When I went and I looked on the menu to see what it was that I was drinking, it yeah. was a Czech Pilsner. Okay. And I'm like, well, I don't know what a Pilsner is. I, well, you know, I don't know. good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I know that uh, I think lagers or uh, lagers, I think the, are the light ones, like Corona, Budweiser. I think those are all lagers. Oh, I don't know. And then the ales get a little darker and it just goes up, you know, ambers and they have like, uh, they got these uh, sour beers now. Oh, it's all yeah, sour, that, they like did, kombucha. They did give us a, a beer that that was really fruity. I did not like it. It was too. It was called Tropical or Tropicana tropical. or something like that. Yeah, I did not like that. Yeah, you know, see the thing about it is when you, um, for me, it's just a strange, strange thing. You know, when you, you go for something that is a, like that, a beer, it's almost like remember when you were a kid and you and somebody like a parent would say, "Here, try this. You know, try this beer." You know, I remember, I remember having that happen to me as a kid, you know, my dad or my mom, Hey, I'll take a sip of beer, you know, whatever. And when I'd had it those few times, it was awful, you know, like, Oh, it was just flavor. I'm very unfamiliar with it, you know, because everything I would be drinking would be soda, Mm -hmm. you know, juice, uh, you know, whatever, you know, that's what kids drink. Right. So when you take that first sip of that dry, you know, acrid uh, flavor, it's it's like, ew, you know? Yeah. Well, that's kind of when I drink a lot of beers now, if I'm not familiar with the, the beer, I think, I think in some cases, not only do you pick a beer you like, but you also pick something that, that you can get adjusted to. 
Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think that if, if I started drinking beer the first time and had a stone delicious, would I think it'd be delicious? That's true. I, I actually have, you know, I drink a lot of Coronas and whatever before and then built my way up just the way that we did back when we started drinking wine. Yeah. Uh, you, we liked that, uh, what was that, the, the white Zinfandel, <laughs> which is it's juice. <laughs> And you get and you get lit. Testing. You can get lit on that on that cheap wine. Mm -hmm. But then eventually you start you know you start to change because now you're kind of bored with that sweet syrupy thing, mm -hmm. and you want something different. So you move up or move away. Away right? from the sweet. Yeah. Yeah, it's not so much up. It's just away. And and I think that's what the, when I go to these places, unfortunately, um, I I don't get a chance to try all these different beers yeah. typically. And, and these guys have a lot. I'm on their website, and yeah. I and I found the one that I tasted. That was. Why don't you pull that mic closer to your face? And and the the crazy part is, if you read the description, I would I would totally say, oh yeah, those are the kind of flavors I like. Yeah. But the, uh, yuck! It was. It's called Tropicus. Yeah. And it says tropical pale ale, is a refreshing a refreshing blend of blood orange and grapefruit. Two of my favorite drinks. I love blood orange. I love grapefruit. Not in a beer. It just was weird. It yeah. tasted gross to me. Well, you know, it's the same thing when I go looking at the Trader Joe's. I, I buy wine at Trader Joe's now. I used to buy it over there at the Ralph's because they had a, a deal. But nothing is quite as good as the Trader Joe's deal. The prices at Trader Joe's. As a matter of fact, you know, I also changed my uh, my wine, the type of wine I buy. I started buying European wines more so than Napa wines. And I heard, again, they, right? they uh, made mention of the fact that there's a lot of tannins and a lot of chemicals in there in processing wine. I've always known this. And just the way that I've known that a lot of carcinogens go into uh, smoked meat. Mm -hmm. You know, when you, how, how do you get flavor on smoked meat? Your, all the particulate from the burning wood is going onto your food. So I, I didn't, you know, I wasn't exactly happy with that. You know, I don't know. And then, uh, when I heard about the wines, I think I'd, I mean, I'd actually you know, taken a class on wine when I was in school. You know, it's, you don't want to drink a lot of things that have chemicals the way, because I think it's cancer causing. A lot of so bad what are you stuff. Saying? Are you saying California wines have more cancer causing well, stuff? Well, don't take my word for it, of course. Don't take my word for it, of course. But uh, do your research. But um, I have read an article and I did some quick cursory searches on Google, and it does appear that the standards, in California are very different than Europe, how they process wine. Oh, yeah. you mean, I would think we would be really stringent on stuff. Well, you, that would be true too if you thought about how much meat is eaten in America that's smoked and cured and things like that. And there's actually a lot of chemicals that go into that process too. Yeah, well. Yeah. So okay. anyways, like, like, uh, like the meats that you get from the market, like the sliced ham mm -hmm. you know, or those processed yeah. things. Just, I know they're terrible. Pump full of chemicals, yeah. I know. So we try to eat those very, very. <clears throat> yeah, well, that's that's the same thing with the wine. I, when I heard about that, because I mean, I like I like to have a glass of wine, and uh, I, I've, I've been drinking this one from Trader Joe's called Tiembres. It's a Spanish wine. It's just a red table wine. It's just, but it's it's six dollars. It's better. I mean, it's it's better than a, half of the wines I've drank, you know, from Napa. I mean, literally for six dollars, you can get a very drinkable glass of wine. I need to get you one of the. Well, this is for it gets rid of what sulfates because I guess that's what makes in it wine. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. There's like some filter that you, you know, can you know put what on and it's such a strange thing that that you know the the way I think I think it has to do with the fact that the 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 volume in the market is so hot that they have to the processes have to be faster. Mm. And in order to be able to process it faster and get it into the bottle and whatever, I think you have to, you know, to keep up with the mass, the demand, you have to process it faster and use things that you wouldn't ordinarily use, you know, or they don't use in Europe. Ah, uh, okay. But, you know, but again, again, I, uh, this is an article. It could have been. So then that, maybe you should switch over here and start drinking more beers. <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, what? Uh, beer's weird for me. Um, I've always heard that, you know, I have a belly already, right? So. For me to say, to drink something that people know is high in carbs, that gives people, you know, they even have a word for it, beer belly. Yeah. So I don't need help with the belly. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Well, I'll, you know. And, I, and I, frankly, I just don't like it as much uh, to sit around. Like, like let's say I'm watching television at nighttime. I just don't see myself kicking back beers. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? I just don't. I know it's yeah. funny, but it's and, true. But here's the weird part, though: if you put on a ball game or the UFC mm-hmm. or you know whatever, then suddenly you need a beer. You know, beer's the you know requisite. You know, a, a beer, a you know onion dip, chips. <laughs> you know that seems to go hand in hand. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and if you're having a if you're having like this place has burgers and fries and all that, this beer probably goes really well. Oh sure. And I just read the Oracle of Time. Because for, for me, that was the one I liked, the Oracle. Okay. And it was, it just went down easy. It was just like refreshing. I don't know. It was just, and I don't usually drink beer, but this one, when I look at it, I'm like, that doesn't sound like something that I would like, but I liked. It says, bewitch the senses with subtle, dark, earthy spice character and herbal oak aromas complemented by earthy malt flavor with notes of biscuit and honey. Does that sound something like that I would drink? Not really, right? Oh, but- Look, if it works for you, it works for you. I no, don't know. Isn't that weird? I, I don't know if it's weird. I think I think the thing about it is is that's what um, artists do. They take something that you look, look when you go when you go look at wines at Trader Joe's. You know they have a description. Yeah. And I think that's the job of the of the vintner or the or the beer the you know brewer the brewer what are they called brewmaster. Oh oh. Uh, that guy is there to assemble flavors by adding this and that and the other thing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, no, that's uh, that's a talent. I don't know. But then we also drank one that was called Oblivion, and that one, I thought it was okay, too. And that one has this fruit essence, too. And I do remember having that fruit essence, but it wasn't as bad as the other one. Yeah. It wasn't that tr- that tropical. That one was way too much. This one's got, yeah, a po- potent aroma of tangerine, pomelo, and passion fruit lure your, you deeply yeah. into the abyss. But, you know, the thing about that is it's like a shoe. You know what I mean? It's some people you put on the shoe and it fits and some people it doesn't. You know, I, I in the case of beer or wine or any food, really, I'm, I'm like I'm like Cinderella with a slipper. You know what I mean? Because if you try and uh, you know, try that same common, have somebody else take that combination and use maybe different hops or they're using a different you know additive of some kind. And it, if they made the beer down the street at another brewery, it would probably taste different because they're going to have a different hand. They're going to have a different sensibility. They're going to say, oh, I want a little more citrus here. I'm going to, what do I need to do to add the right hops to make it taste more citrusy? And, you know, the thing about it, too, is that um, there's so many variations on hops and grains and yeah, things. Clearly. Yeah. So, And then how they treat them, too. How is it brewed? Do they roast them? Do they toast them beforehand? Uh, do they, how do they process, what are they doing? I have no clue. I don't know anything about beer, but I do know that... Um, You've got a lot of choices here, and I'm sure you'll find something you like. I mean, I just think you should have, you know, look for something that you'd like. Well, because, look, like I said, yeah, it was also it was eight thirty at night or whatever, yeah, and, you and wanted some food. I wanted food. That was that was a had to happen, <laughs> and they didn't have food at that time, so that was a problem. the The ambiance wasn't exactly my first choice. Yeah, it's not and, your vibe. And no, 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 no. Just like you know. You know, I get it. I get it. You know, it, you know this is not my. No. I can get over uh, uh, some places aesthetic if everything else is good. I don't care about that. As long as the food's great, I don't care if you have skulls on your wall. That don't matter to me. I, in fact, I, I'm, I'm a Halloween person. I love that kind of stuff. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, again, you and I aren't the same. No. no. And uh, we'll probably never be the same. No. Uh, but you know, the thing about it is I'm not a bad person cause I don't oh, like skulls. No, no, you, Hey, you like a clean, nice, modern aesthetic. It's, it is what it is. Well, I mean, the, here's the thing though. Okay. When we were talking in the early morning that day, I, cause I told you, I said, I'm going to be over here at this, yep. I'm going to be over here at the car thing. I'm over here. I'm trying this place. And I tried it at like 10 30, uh, in the morning at, at, um, the nest tambien. Yeah. And I had this burger, breakfast burger thing, and it was so delicious. I ate it all, and I was full. And, and then I, said to you, I told you, I said, you know what? I know we're supposed to go to lunch. Yeah, I was. And I was it. in my mind. I had my mind set on Houston's. Yes, which is my favorite ambiance. Okay, it is my favorite. It has everything I love in decor. It has it there. And I thought saw myself having a martini at the bar where I like to sit, where I normally get my spot. And I was just going to have a glorious afternoon. Now, unfortunately, this is the polar opposite. <laughs> it is. It well, it's, it's not even. It's not even about whether it's opposite or anything. it's a matter of like it's just not my taste. You know, if you said to me, 
you know, do you want to go to Chuck E. Cheese to have a beer? I would probably wouldn't like that either. Um, but the fact of the matter is that it's just I was my mind had already been set in the morning for a place like Houston's. We don't and, have that and here. We don't. But we did say, okay, maybe we'll cruise into Bellamy's, but it was closed. And you know, Bellamy's has you know, a nice environment. Would have been fine. It's all right. It's not great, but it's all right. I didn't say it was the you know yeah 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 the grand dam of of environments. Except Ventana, just, and you're like, no, I don't want that either. I'll be honest with you; they were probably going to be closed. Probably, <laughs> everything else is. So if if we had gone to Bellamy's, it'd probably been fine. But you know, and so we ended up at at Chili's, which <laughs> which has become my go to. And the reason why I like it is because they have the trivia game. That's that's it, the main reason. They have TVs on. They got they 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 have those egg rolls. I can get by there. You can get by with uh, egg rolls, a beer, and your trivia game, and you're like, I'm okay. I, I've spent glorious hours there in the <laughs> afternoon. Go for the egg rolls. Lunch, yeah. Have a cold beer. Play my 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 uh, trivia. trivia, and watch a little TV. It's great. Yeah. So, anyways, um, to wrap it up. If you're if you're aware of Steelcraft, go. It seems really great because I'm I'm picturing myself going there at night, live music, and uh, they have a, like everything from uh, coffee to tacos. They have it all. That sounds great. Um, so check it out. Definitely get to Nest Tambien and uh, Nest for breakfast in uh, Bellflower or Bellflower Boulevard in uh, I think it's Bellflower. Check them out. They're they're worth going. Really cool little place. Cool people. Very very attentive. Uh, you know, in, innovative kind of drinks and food. You can't mess. It's really great. Good times. Um. Anyways, thanks for listening. Uh, we had a good time doing the show. We hope you enjoyed listening. And uh, I'm gonna say it again. Be nice to each other. Uh, this is not enough people being nice to each other out there. So, uh, take my advice. All right. Have a great day. Bye.